Well, good morning, YouTube friends and family. I have missed you all so much as I've been recovering. It's Saturday morning here. This is the first morning since my initial surgery a week ago Wednesday that I haven't felt like I've been run over by a truck. I actually woke up almost pain-free and I want to thank you all you have been amazing with your support, with giving me time to recover, with your generous, sweet, kind comments, but most of all your prayers because it has totally made a difference and I have felt each and every one of you holding me up <clears throat> and I'm not going to cry. So for those of you who don't know, I don't know if I've ever shared this, I like cry very, very easily. Um, I cry when I'm happy. I cry when I'm sad. I cry when something sweet. <laughs> I just cry a lot. And my dad, bless his soul, may he rest in peace, used to always say that my eyes were hooked to my bladder because I cried so easily. So I hope that brings a smile to you. So today we are going to start a two-part, sort of a Frugal Friday holiday series on how to make your own gift bags and create beautiful packages without spending maybe any money, but certainly how to do it without spending a lot of money. So I've made a prototype. I want to make one together with you, but I want to give you lots and lots of ideas. So some of you may be saying, really, you can go to the dollar store and buy a gift bag for a dollar. Well, that's true. But in a case like like I've just been through, I couldn't get off the couch, let alone go to the dollar store, number one. Number two, that's a dollar I don't have to spend. And I originally learned how to make these gift bags. I can't claim credit. I didn't invent it from Pam at the Paper Outpost. So if you're into junk journaling or paper crafting, um, she has an amazing YouTube channel and she's just a delight to watch. But I started making them because I make what's called junk journals. So let me just share with you an example. Um, this is made from manila folders and it folds out and has a little journal book and it's, you know, decorated with nature things. Now, before y'all ask, I make these to sell, but I'm out and this is my absolute last one and I need it for my prototype as I'm making items. So the other thing that I love making <clears throat> is more the journal form. So this is just made from fabric that I had and <laughs> believe it or not, um, I reinforced it a little bit with some junk mail. I save all my junk mail, like um, the cardboard pieces, not to purchase anything. And then when you open it up, it actually has um, some elastic ribbon that are holding the pages. So it is a cloth bound, got it upside down here, journal. And I just took permanent ink and stamped journal. So these are like long and skinny. So whenever I sell one, I, I like to include a gift bag that is also sort of paper crafting themed. So let me show you first the prototype. So this is one of the ones I made and you can see it looks just like a gift bag. I made a tag out of some old book pages and this is actually pages from a book that I'm gonna share with you. And it, it is quite skinny, but it's just perfect for um, anything tall and skinny, like if you're gifting a book and you can change the dimensions of the gift bag that you're making. You don't have to use book pages. You can use um, new, like a half spread of newspaper. So, you know, if you open the newspaper and it's got two sides, fold that in half, that's a good dimension for making gift bags. You can use gift wrap. So I don't have a lot of gift wrap. Um, 
let's just say gift wrapping isn't my strength, but I'm going to cover that in the second video. So this paper is super thin, very thin, and it has a tendency when I'm trying to wrap something to tear. But again, wrapping is not one of my highest skills. So you could double this. You know, the packaging paper that you get when you order something like from Amazon, the, I don't have any right here, which is amazing because I have like everything else here. You can um, iron that and actually use that to make your uh, bags. So I am going to swing you down, give me a minute to get adjusted here, and let's start making a gift bag. So what will you need? You're going to need some sort of paper whether it's from, as I mentioned in an earlier video, like a coffee table size book, newspaper, uh, packaging paper, or wrapping paper. You'll need some glue. And I find a permanent glue stick works really well. You'll need um, either a hole punch or like something sharp, like an awl or even a pencil, where you can poke holes to put your ribbon through and then something to make a handle out of. So stay tuned. I'm going to get adjusted and we'll start making gift bags. Well, I may have to adjust you a couple times um, so that you can see well, but let's start out by talking about the paper. So hopefully you, if you're working along with me, and I hope you are, hopefully you have some newspaper. Uh, does anybody read newspaper anymore? I, I don't, but... Um, some packaging paper, some wrapping paper, or maybe you had a coffee table type book. So this is obviously a well-loved and well-used book purchased from the Goodwill and it's Wildflowers of the World. So it's absolutely stunning in its illustrations. Oops. So I'm just kind of flipping here so that you can see. So you want to carefully and this is um let's see how big this is this is 12 by maybe 10 so pretty good size book but even so I'm going to have to select some pages to glue together so what I've done wow I'll just throw that on the floor <laughs> is I picked out three sheets that had some red and green on that so that it would look a little bit festive. But depending on the subject of the book that you've chosen will depend on, you know, what images. It even looks nice to do it with printing. Um, these other sides, which will become the inside of the bag, are printed on. So the first thing you want to do is you want to decide how you're going to lay it out. Let me try moving you up and swinging you down. Oh, that's much better. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so um, each page has a little bit of red on it, so I've kind of chosen this layout. So the first thing you're gonna do is you wanna glue these all together, and I am using Scotch Create Permanent Glue Stick. I have probably used every kind of glue stick that's ever been made. This is definitely my fave. So I'm just gluing well up to the edge and you probably should protect your work surface because in a moment I'm going to be all gluey and line up the pages at the top and bottom, press down. Now, if you end up having a gap, that's where something like art glitter glue with the little nozzle will really come in handy. But it looks like I actually did a pretty good job. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. So, oh, I need a third arm today. Let me just really glue this up good. So I hope you all had a really blessed Thanksgiving. I had to cancel Thanksgiving, obviously, because I have always been um, the only person in the family that does the cooking and the entertaining. I enjoy it very much, not complaining, but um, I just, um, obviously I wasn't so up to it. All right, so I'm just getting um, the glue just a moment to grab. And I have to tell you, if 
you keep up and of course they're dry if you keep and that's the last one if you keep some baby wipes or just the um, flushable wipes handy that will help to keep your hands clean now you can at this point take if you want the vintagey look you can take some distress oxide and you can go around the edges so while I'm inking here, let me just share a couple pieces of information. So let's say you decided you were going to use um, wrapping paper. What you may need to do is to fold down this top edge, but since this is a finished book edge, there's a spot that didn't get glued. I don't uh, feel that I need to fold down the top edge, but you can certainly do that. And these are thicker than normal pages. So for newspaper, if you're using newspaper, I would take the full spread, fold it in half, use the folded edge as your top so that you don't have two pieces that you have to worry about gluing together. I mean, after all, it is a gift bag. It's not something you know, that's gonna get a lot of heavy wear, but depending on the weight of the item that you're putting in it, it may need a double thickness. I have found for what I normally use this for, with using these thick pages, it's absolutely fine. So I'm just inking it to give it a distressed look. Certainly no requirement whatsoever. It's one of the things I love doing and I think it's super relaxing. And it does add a little certain something to it. And so the color I'm using is called Walnut Stain. And I've shared before in some of my paper crafting videos that um, these are made by Tim Holtz. They come in a million colors. Okay, so we've inked. Now what we're going to do with whatever paper that you've chosen is we're going to make a tube. So, same process of gluing along the edge. And normally, and this is a great use for all that the junk mail you get, I normally use a catalog underneath to protect my surface so it doesn't get all gluey. But I guess I'm living wild today. So, to line it up, just make sure your top edge meets evenly where it overlaps same for the bottom so you really don't need to do any real measuring whatsoever now you may be thinking well that's all well and good but the image images don't match i found that adds a certain charm in my opinion <laughs> i don't care that the images don't match each other. I just think it's really, really cool um, to have all of these put it upside down botanical uh, images. And these are actually flowers from South Africa. And if the person's really interested, they can read the inside of it. Okay, so now we have a tube. So what you want to do is decide what's going to be your front. And I really like, yeah, I really like that red flower. I think it's super festive. So I'm just going to lay this down, lining up my top and subsequent bottom edges, and I'm gonna smash it. Now you have a few options. Um, oh gosh, yeah, here we go. This is called a bone folder. Um, it's like a piece of plastic. It must have at one point in time been made out of bone, but it just helps you make nice sharp creases. You can also just take the handles of scissors or anything hard and flat to define those edges. Put my lid back on. All right, so if you are doing your distress inking, you wanna go ahead and distress ink that probably should have done this one without it because it would have been faster for demonstration purposes but this will just give you an option if you don't have distress ink you can use eyeshadow it does work really really well okay 
So now you want to decide the, the height of our bag is limited by the height of the page. We could have glued another set of pages on, but I don't need a really tall bag. Do you want it to be skinny on the bottom? Or do you want it to have a fat bottom so that the width will contain something bigger than just that tiny journal I showed you earlier? So since I've showed you, oh, here it is. Couldn't remember what I did. This is about a one inch bottom. Since I've, I've shown you that prototype, let's make a fatter one. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm going to fold it up. And again, no measuring. I'll, I'll measure and tell you what I used so that you can mimic it if you wanna do it exactly. And creases are your friend in this project. So I am just making sure everything is really good and flat. And again, I, I like to ink as I go because sometimes once you get the bag all together, um, it's hard to manipulate it to get to those creases. Okay, so now, the only, and this is not hard, but the only tricky part. Take your folded bottom, push in like so. So we've got a flap, we open the flap, we push the points, and we're gonna line those up with the bottom seam here, or where we folded, and make a point. So we're gonna do that on both sides. And again, my paper is pretty thick, so you may not have quite the struggle <laughs> that I'm having. And then if you see any lifting, you can go in again with your glue stick. It is important that the bottom is sturdy, and I'll also share with you a way you can reinforce that bottom. And I'm getting appropriately gluey. Okay, so now, We've just folded in like so. Now what you want to do is take the bottom and you want to fold it just past this line, where the fold line. So, oh, I promised you I would measure that, didn't I? So I went up about three inches. So we're going to take this and we are going to fold it just beyond maybe half inch that fold line and again we're going to crease so now you're building a little bit of thickness so as you build that thickness the creases become a little bit more important and we'll ink it okay now we are going to take the top and we want this to form a very similar point. So we're gonna fold the top down so that it covers our first fold. Ugh. Okay, now I haven't put any glue down in case I made a mistake. But this looks like it's gonna be just perfect. So now to glue, you want to glue the bottom corners as well as the bottom flap. And then you wanna do the same for the top. And again, if you don't have glue stick, you can use like Elmer's glue, like white wet glue. Um, if you don't have permanent glue stick, I would opt for the wet white glue uh, just from a sturdiness standpoint. But again, it's not like this is somebody's you know purse that they're gonna carry all the time. Okay. So now that we have that, it sort of looks like a gift bag, right? Well, sort of. 
Now we need to make our sides. So you know how a gift bag has this little foldy thing on the side. So in order to make that, we are going to fold each edge in lining up here. So we're going to put the point in the hole for the point. Line up the top. Crease. I'm trying to think of anything else that you could use as a bone folder if you don't have one. But again, anything hard, and I'm just doing the same process with the other side here. All right. Now, before we open it up and do the big reveal, you know me and my ink, I'm gonna put a little bit of ink on it. So I wonder if, if any of you all found good Black Friday deals. I have a really funny story to tell you, share with you about what I did after my second emergency surgery that I'm still embarrassed about, but um, I'll share that with you when I'm not trying to instruct. Okay. So now the big reveal. What we're gonna do is we're going to open up our bag. Hopefully we haven't completely glued it shut, which I may have gotten a little bit of glue on the paper. There we go. And for the sides, what you wanna do is reverse the fold. So what we folded one direction, we're simply going to fold it the other. And again, where it's folded this direction, just push that in. And fold it the other way. So while this takes a little bit of time, you actually get a lot faster as you go along. Okay. How adorable is that bag? So it's not super fat. I didn't do a big fold in in the sides. I didn't do a big fold up on the bottom. So, you know, it's not going to hold something that's um, super large. But you can simply change that by using taller paper folding up a bigger bottom, folding in, then, of course, bigger sides. So you could call this done. And that's just a little piece of paper from where I tore it out. Or you can reinforce the bottom. So an easy way, you know how a lot of gift bags have that cardboard piece? Just take a piece of cardstock. If you don't have cardstock, you can use, and these are the, the ads I was talking about saving. So like car ads and dental ads, like I need a dental ad, right? Um, it's thick enough that it would reinforce the bottom of the bag a little bit. So you could just cut the piece, you know, mark your dimensions, cut the piece a little bit smaller so it easily fits in the bag. So the final thing that I'm going to do to the outside, and this really does not need decoration at all. So I think one of the fun things about this is, um, like if you're doing this for a family member, maybe they have a hobby, like let's say they like trains. I'm just making this up as I go. Um, you could try going to Goodwill and buying a coffee table book about trains. If you have someone that really enjoys gardening, you could use a gardening book. So you can really personalize it. And I think most Goodwill hardcovers are around $2. Maybe they're up to 3 in some areas. I think it depends on your Goodwill and what special they happen to be running at the time. But I have enough paper, as you can well imagine, that I could make hundreds, <laughs> probably, of gift bags just from that one beautiful flower book. 
So you could simply gift it like this with the plain top. Tip it up a little bit. Or I like to punch holes and put some ribbon through there so that it has a little handle. So just showing you this one. What I did was I took a piece of cardstock and I cut it um, as wide and deep as I wanted it. Um, this looks like it's about an inch shy on either end of the bag and about an inch thick. I used a tiny hole punch like this, but you could certainly use an awl, you could use a pen, you could use anything that would make a hole. And then I fed ribbon through and tied a knot. So let me finish up this bag and I'll bring you back for some final thoughts. Well, here we have our finished gift bag and I just wanted to share the details with you. So inside I did cut a piece of cardstock and just put a couple dabs of glue stick to make sure that it didn't shift around a lot. I used the same green cardstock just to cut a piece, glue sticked it down, punched holes, tied some ribbon, and this ribbon actually came on some kind of a package that I got. I save everything. So you can either have the knots at the top or you can pull it through and have the knot hidden by the bag, which probably looks nicer, actually. And then I made a tag, and I just wanted to share with you how I did that. What I did was, fittingly, I took the dental um, advertisement because it's kind of a cardstock material. I just cut a piece of it, rounded the corners, took a piece from the book that we've been working with that had print on it, wrapped it, I glue sticked it, wrapped it. Then I tore a very small illustration from one of the pages of the book and inked it just to look vintagey, and just a piece of the white here so that you can do the to and from or whatever greeting that you would like. And this is certainly, you know, an optional thing, but I think it just ties the bag all together. And I did tie it to the ribbon, but um, you could certainly glue it to the bag if that's your preference. So there we have our completed gift bag. So I hope you found this helpful. I have not forgotten that we need to do our menthol shower steamers. What I will share with you is that menthol is an extremely strong scent. So far I have not sneezed. I'm avoiding that <laughs> at all cost because I know it's gonna hurt. The abscess that I had actually was in my sinus extending through the implanted bone into my mouth. So I'm a little leery about smelling strong scents yet, but as much better as I feel today, hopefully we can get that in yet this week. So be well, be healthy, be blessed, and get on making those Christmas gift bags. Have a blessed day. Oh, and if you have any questions, Drop me a comment below. Be more than glad to explain if there's anything that seems unclear to you. So now I'm signing off. Have a great day.